about to have a really good time And it's sure to make you smile On the bus, in the car, on the airport without bars Crank it up on the website, it's the Bottom of the Young Podcast Bottom the Young Podcast G'day there, podcaster Hey, uh, coming to you live this morning from the broom cupboard in Sydney. Yep. Um, yeah, we, if, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, listen to the end of the last podcast and you'll hear all the context you need to hear. But still, pretty fun show, so enjoy the episode. My goodness, if you didn't know, we are heading to Bali. We party, 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 we party, Bali style. Oh, that's great, Ben Liam. You're heading to Bali, but how do I come to Bali? Well, it's easy. You just register via the Nova Player app. Uh, then we could be reading your name out. Uh, we'll be doing that a little bit later on this morning. Then you have to call us for your chance to come along the trip. Man, we're going to buy so many BB guns and green lasers and bring them back over through customs. What about a taser? Well, if you're game enough to bring it. Can we do a bit where we do some sort of game and the loser gets tasered? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the loser has to bring it back through customs. Because <laughs> that's always the way. Like, I remember... I, we bought green lasers. Yeah. And then we got told, uh, if you unscrew them and stuff, yeah. different parts of your luggage, yeah. you can get them through. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the people we were travelling with, they got home first and they said, anything to declare? And yeah. they chickened out and said, oh, yeah, we're bringing, some, bringing a couple of green lasers. And they're like, good, because we knew that uh, and you would have spent time in lockup. That's crazy. We had the exact same story but with BB guns where in Bali they said, yeah, no, nah, it's fine. They let they them al- through. They always and say then, that in Bali. Yeah. And then we got to Adelaide yeah. and they were like, no, nah, they always tell you you can but you can't bring BB guns back. Like, this happens like literally <laughs> every day. This is a voiceover sweep to break up the podcast. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to shift the tone a little bit this morning and um, say right? some... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. Um, say some words for a, a fallen hero, mm. um, an Adelaide icon, taken far too soon, mm. 44 years young forever. Uh, I am, of course, talking about Pizza Hut. One, three, double, one, double, six, Pizza Hut delivery. The all-you-can-eat Pizza Hut restaurant at Marion is closing permanently. Rip. Rest in peace. Rest in chicken pieces <laughs> on the meat lovers uh it is it's a, it's a still what in the pizza game um yeah look you know that is part of the south has changed you know that marion shopping center is one of the biggest shopping mm-hmm. centers on the planet mm-hmm. um yes pizza hut wasn't a part of that redevelopment it's it's pretty much stayed the same for like older than a lot of people here mm-hmm. in adelaide just in that little spot in the car park um and i i thought this morning maybe we could all say a few words because you don't realise how good you've got it until oh, it's yeah. gone. You know, uh, just so thirteen. Don't it always seem to go? <laughs> you don't know what you got till it's gone. You pave paradise and you put, put up, up a, a parking, a parking lot. lot over the top of Pizza Hut. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the damn truth? I'm already uh, hearing there's reports around all of the Adelaide suburbs. People are putting stuffed crust <laughs> outside. <laughs> putting it outside. <laughs> yeah, crust out for um. <laughs> um, I just wanted, you know, to say thanks for the good times. Thanks for the pasta. Thanks for the bottomless soft drink. Yep. Um, I'll never forget going from pizza to dessert, from pizza to dessert, from mm-hmm. pizza to dessert. Just, just last night. Yeah, just a belly full of Hawaiian czar ice cream meat lovers and those jelly cubes that they do. Ashes to ashes, crust to crust. We all come from crust and we... Return to crust. Uh, Thirteen twenty four ten. If you if you're brave enough, if you'd like to share a few words for the all you can eat Pizza Hut in Marion, uh, thirteen twenty four ten is the number. Ava joins us now in Oakland's Park. Good morning, Ava. Hey, good morning, guys. So I must admit, I did cheat on the Marion store um, with another store down <sighs> south, but then they closed. I did actually then go down to Marion for the first time in forever, and I actually yes. found I reconnected with someone I had not seen for 15 years and it was amazing so we sat there eating pizza after not seeing each other for 15 years it was just amazing that is that is the power of the all you can eat yeah pizza yeah long ago like was that was that quite recently that you went there uh look I'm I'm talking probably about four months ago yeah 
That's that's not bad though. Like four months ago, at least you've got that memory. You know, there'd be yeah. so yeah. many people. And Ava, I know it's hard, but you'll always have that. You'll yeah. always have that. Yeah. So look, so that is one memory sharing. that I will hold on yep. to. So thanks, yep. guys. And I we, really appreciate. We will you. send. Oh, you appreciate you and that friend mm-hmm. for an all-you-can-eat meal at Pizza Hut. Uh, Tess joins us now. Uh, good morning, Tess. Would you like to share? Good a memory morning. This morning? Yeah, my son's in his 30s and I used to take my boys there about 25 years ago and they'd always try and skip, you know, the pasta and I'd say, no, you're not allowed to have dessert till you've eaten pizza, pasta, and then you can have dessert. (laughs) That's a very, very funny sentence. As if you don't get dessert. <laughs> you you, don't, you do not get your ice cream until you eat your melted cheese and meat on carbs and your big bowl of carbs with carby sauce. Now, are you hiding your barbecue chicken under the table again? Because there's Captain no. there. You've got to get those veggies in you. There's kids yeah. in other countries who would die to eat a whole family meat lovers to themselves before their ice cream. But, Mum, I'm only six. My stomach hurts. Pack it in, kid. I paid for all you can eat. No, but it's very yeah, sad. No, it's just, you know, it is very sorry, sad. It is sad. Yeah. It is very yeah. sad. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. Well, how would you like to take the boys there one last time on us? I would love that. Well, well yeah, you've, you've got, got to do that. You, you pull one out while you're there. Just, I know, they don't want too much of a clean-up because it is bottomless soft drinks, so yep. just pour out a little bit. Yeah, they are going out of business, though, so go, go your hardest. Go nuts. <laughs> One last party, huh? Uh, uh, Brittany in Salisbury East joins us now. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, guys. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. No, sorry uh, for yours, no, too. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's it's hard on everyone, but um, I, I find in times like these, it's, mm-hmm. it's nice to know you're, you're not in it alone. And, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we appreciate you coming on. To why don't we, why don't share, we share a hug? Come in, Brittany. You want a hug? Yeah, come in. Oh, that, yeah, let's do it. I think oh, we need nice. it. Thank yeah, you. that's good. nice. It feels good. Did you have a story you'd like to share? I do. So we used to go a lot when we were kids, and we went for my brother's birthday. Uh, I reckon he would have been, like, maybe 10, and he went hard. Like, he went really hard on the pizzas. Yeah. And he yeah. said, look, I don't feel good. He went yeah. to the toilet, he threw up, and came back and smashed out some dessert. Oh, he, he wouldn't it. be the last. <laughs> nah. Would not be the first, and he will not be the last. It's a strong that tactic. What, no, that's really, that's that's the foundation that Pizza Hut Marion was, was built on. It's, 100%. it's going to the toilet, it's vomiting up six pizzas, and then coming out, <laughs> it's coming back in you know, with a bit of, with a, you know, bit of, um, you know, uh, pepperoni on the side of your face yep. and just go on, it's time for a soft serve. Maybe, you know, maybe you're wondering, like, how can such an iconic <laughs> business go out of business? Yeah. It's because people are eating six pizzas, yeah. vomiting it up, it's and then eating six more. It's because kids are eating <laughs> to the point of vomiting. However, <laughs> however, it was beautiful while it lasted, and yeah. we probably won't see anything like this ever again. What if WhatIf.com is all about helping Aussies make the most out of every holiday, and now's the time to unapologetically holiday bigger and better than ever before. Jump online or the What If app and book your getaway today. What If, it's Aussie for travel. It's 6 10. Hallelujah, it's 6 10. Yep, the 610 quiz. If you get all five questions right, you get to choose the next song we play. And first cab off the rank this morning is Carmen in Albert Park. Good morning, Carmen. What are you doing up so early? Good morning, guys. i just like to get up. I've got the day off today, cosy in bed, listening to the radio. Hang on. So you've got what? a day off and you decided yeah. to just turn the radio on this early to have a little listen and get involved in the 610 quiz. Yes, I did. It's funny when you wow. don't have to get up, you still want to get up. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, Carmen. Well, uh, good on you for seizing the day. Carpe diem. Let's see if you can get the next five questions right. Uh, first of all, a bit sad. Pizza Hut Marion has announced it's closing in a few weeks, which is shocking. Uh, can you name one ingredient on a Hawaiian pizza? Pineapple. Very good. Uh, one of the biggest video games of all time, GoldenEye from N64, is getting a revival. Uh, Nintendo, mate. Okay, I'll finish the question. <laughs> what company made the N64 console? Nintendo, <laughs> mate. Yeah, well, thanks for, that. thanks for that, Ben. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can I say, whoever wrote that question, dumb question to write, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Queensland beat New South Wales in a ru- the Rugby League State of Origin last night. We couldn't care less. Uh, what colour do the Queensland team wear? Maroon. Yeah, you got it. Happy birthday to Michael J. Fox. He's 61 today. Uh, what's the name of his time-travelling movie franchise? 
Back to the Future. Bang. Jeez, you're too good, Carmen. Last question <laughs> here. We're going to need your singing voice. Uh, there are new sex robots out with Scottish accents. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> they're going viral online at the moment. Can you finish these classic lyrics? But I would walk 500 miles. I would walk 500 more just to be oh, the man. Oh, well done. Are you still going? <laughs> 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 as well, Carmen. That extra points yes. for that. Uh, well, yeah, well done. Uh, uh, we will awesome. send you along with a family pass to the movies for calling up. Um, you also get to pick the next song we play. Did you want to hear my song this morning? There will be no flag above my door. Just a bit of Dido. Yeah. Or, Carmen, are you a fan of buses and trains? Yeah, well, buses and trains. Oh, couple of anthems. Yeah, I, you know, I think I'm happy with that. Ben, Ben's picked a, a, a belter there. Yes. Buses and trains. It is Bachelor Girl is the name of it. Thanks for joining us this morning, Carmen. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Ben and Liam are in your head. I have a question for you, okay? Everyone will have an opinion on this, so ask yourself this very question. Would you pierce your baby's ears? Because there's this TikTok that's gone viral of a new mum who's being criticised by people in the comments because she's uploaded a video of her newborn baby and the baby's got these little flower ear piercings. They're not like fake ones. They're, they're, it's real... Ear piercing. It's pretty wild, isn't it? I think it's crazy. Well, I mean, I, I say no. Um, Producer Bell joins us now. I mean, we haven't had our ears pierced. You have, and you mm. think it's fair game, Bell. Yeah, look, I, I think it's fair game for this mum to have done it. Um, and it, it is saying that she did it, gosh, yeah, after a few days of it being born. Um, but my, my thought is, I mean, the, that baby has come out and it's experiencing so many things and, you know, confusing. You know, it's a, it's a newborn. You know, it's in pain. It's what it's feeling, whatever. That piercing its ears to me is, is, you know, nothing. And it's, and it's so gonna you- not even know what's going on. You think the baby's already experiencing pain, so why not give it some more pain? <laughs> okay, well, there's pain. a line, but I'm just saying if there is a time to do it, maybe it is the best time. Yeah, why not give the baby a sleeve while you're at it? Because, <laughs> you know, it, it, they, those tattoos hurt, and later in life, you know, it might not have to go it's through It's just, that. for me, it's purely aesthetic, and as a parent, you're just doing it because you think it would look cute. Yeah, like, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it make more sense... But when that kid's old enough, if they ask for their ears pierced, then you can say, yeah, all right, you can get your ears pierced. Like, why Why are you making the decision to, to well before they can even speak? Yeah, that, that's a fair point. But there are a lot of people that, for religious reasons, also get, um, pierce their children's ears very young. And sometimes that can happen, you know, three or four or five years old. And I think it's it's more... Not traumatic is a strong word, but for the kid to have it done then, compared to when, like I said before, it's a newborn and it's not really knowing what's going on and you kind of just get it over and done with, it's like, I mean, dare I say for guys, it's like circumcision. Like, you know, you you have that done very young. So this to me is kind of like the same thing, you know, get it over and done with. I think, though, that there would be a medical argument to circumcision. I know some people would disagree, some would agree to that, but I feel like at least that has a why, whereas... The ear piercing for me is purely cosmetic. You're just doing it because you think it would look it's, cute. It's kind of like, I mean, I know, you, like, having your ears pierced, like, you know, the kid might grow up to do that anyway. But I suppose, like, what about different piercings? Like, if it was, if they had hardcore parents, if they had a little septum piercing, is that weird? Yeah, exactly. That's Where's weird. the line? What, what about if they were, like, mm. a little bit feral and they got it a little eyebrow piercing? Well, uh, well the thing about piercings as well is... Uh, you can remove them and oh god yeah look okay yeah fair point fair point but you can remove piercings and if you're You're that young (laughs) if you're that young then i would say your body would heal pretty quick if you did if you did change your mind you know if you go oh they're five and i want to take it out i'm sure the year would grow over all right here's the thing none of us though Mm -hmm. are parents so i'd love to open the phone lines on this one 13 24 10 we've shared our opinion what do you think? Would you pierce your baby's ears? Maybe you've done it. Yeah, maybe. 13 24 10 is the number. We'd love to get your thoughts. Alicia joins us now. What do you think? Is it, is it fair game to pierce a baby's ears? Yeah, definitely. Like, it's been done since the dawn of time, so why not? Yeah, but my, the my argument parents there, to me. Alicia, would be there's been lots of things that have been done since the dawn of time. doesn't make them right. 
Yeah, but it's like um, Bell said, you can take them out if the uh, child doesn't want them. Yeah, I mean, you're not yeah. tattooing the kid. At the end of the day, it's like doing a haircut to me. It's like if you cut the kid's hair and it looks bad, it'll grow back. And then with with the baby forming so early, if you pierce the ears and then you go, nah, I don't want it, I can guarantee that skin will grow back over. All of mine have, and yeah, I, I don't had know. mine I when like I was 18. When, when, when I was like... Um Growing up, I think it was like a thing. Like my sister wanted her ears pierced, but she wasn't allowed until yeah. like a certain age. Mm. You know, it was like thirteen or something. Alicia, have you have you got kids and are their ears pierced from a young age? No. Well, my daughter's got done when she was four. My husband didn't know when I did it. He thought I was joking when I had brought her home. He was against right. it, and I kind of didn't quite ask when I done it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think four is a, that's an age where, the, you know, your kid's aware and probably feels a lot of pain at that point. Yeah, it's aware, but it also wants ice cream for dinner. Like, it doesn't actually know what's good for it, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, look, uh, Kelly uh, joins us now. What are you saying? Do you think it's okay to pierce a baby's ears? No. No, definitely not. No, don't like it at all. Okay, why? Well, um, one, I think it looks silly, and two, mm-hmm. I think it's dangerous. Um, if they get it pulled out, if they pull it out mm-hmm. and get it in their mouth, you can catch it on mm-hmm. their clothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do it as adults. I catch my earrings all the time um, and I pull them out myself and we could do it to the baby and rip it out and hurt hurt them. I just think mm-hmm. it's just really dangerous and really silly. There you go. That's a great point, oh, Kelly. Well, thank you for your call, Kelly. Uh, one last call here. Uh, we'll find out if they're on Team Producer Bell or Team Ben and Liam. Uh, Amanda, uh, would you pierce your baby's ears? Yeah, definitely, and I have. Um, you know, here, if you want to go get your child's ears pierced anyway, they have to be at least six weeks old and have their first set of immunisations um, okay. before right, getting okay. them pierced. So it's not... Straight away, um, they have to have the first set of injections before um, a qualified ear piercer will actually do it. Okay. Uh, Mandy, you, 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 sorry, you sound like you, you... Do you work in the industry? No. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, I, I was, was going to say, you, you do know your stuff, but I was like, I wonder what's fair game. Like, I mean, you know, we're talking about yeah. ear piercing, but I mean, you know how, like, people have different... What's that What's that little one in the in the middle bell that people get? Is it, is it the, t- the torus or is it uh, the, the, uh, the... Just the stud or the bar? Tragus. The tragus, yeah, yeah, that little bit that pops yeah. out. Would you do, you know, are you allowed to do that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, they wouldn't let you do that. But, um, you, you know, just the earlobes. Um, and, I mean, we had no issues with her pulling them out. Obviously, we did a lot of research before we mm. made the decision. Um, and I was sort of a bit on the fence about it. But I'm glad we did it when we did it because she was too young to even reach for them to pull them out anyway at that that age. Mm. Oh, that's what I was going to yeah. ask, Amanda, because um, we did get a text from someone who said that they took their, like, three-month-old to get theirs done, and they were fine, mm-hmm. but they brought along the a two-year-old, and the two-year-old was screaming and scared. They weren't even getting the two-year-old done. It was just witnessing and just, you know, obviously reacting mm-hmm. really bad, but this, Look, you know, the younger they are, they just go, oh, okay. <laughs> what, what I would say, Amanda, uh, putting this back on you, but I suppose at that age, who's it for? Is it for them or is it for you? Um, look, I've had my ears pierced as a baby and when I was about seven years old. As a baby, you know, didn't remember it. And then as a seven-year-old, I definitely remembered it. So I thought I'd do it when she's this age so then she wouldn't have to remember the pain of it and having to go through that. Because it can be traumatic, I guess. Yeah, but to Liam's point, I reckon it's more for you than for the baby. And that's fine. It's up to you what you want to do. Uh, but it's a in- very interesting question yeah, to ask, I reckon. It's a bit of a can of worms, but yeah. you know what, man? You've swung me, and I'm, I'm going to get my baby a little eyebrow piercing because <laughs> I, I reckon those things are pretty cool. Peace up, Pod Town. We've had Bohemian Rhapsody. We've had Rocket Man. Now we've got the new Elvis biopic, and there is another one in the works, and it is for Madonna. It should be huge. I don't know. I feel like that's a biopic I could do without. Oh, people love Madonna. Oh, they it's do. Actually, it's a, I don't know if you've seen Ozark, um, the series, but you know Ruth? Yeah. Yeah, she's going to play Madonna. In oh, really? Yeah, she'd pull that off. I think, yeah, I suppose she's got, she looks a bit Madonna. I guess Madonna has got a pretty wild story to tell. Absolutely. Uh, if you could see a biopic of anybody in the world, Liam, I reckon I know your answer. Mm-hmm. Who would it be? That hasn't been made yet. Okay. Three. Three. 
two, one. one. Kurt Cobain. That's pretty. I thought Very so. Good. I thought and so. I reckon I would know yours too. If if any okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any, any artist, yeah. a biopic. We're talking actors. Yeah, anybody yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Three, Three, two, two one. Chumba Wumba. Oh, <laughs> he knows me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. That one will get into production you know, soon. It'll be a, it'll be a, a movie about them getting knocked down, but they get up again. There's whiskey drinks. There's sour drinks. Oh, it'll be a ratings bonanza. Absolutely. The paper today. The headline reads: Blake's Crossing residents in the north are saying they're being overrun by mice. Wasn't great on the buttons there. <laughs> <laughs> Are being overrun by mice. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I wanted to go to Blake's Crossing this morning to try and find out if they truly are or if it's a fantastical headline. So now we are crossing to Blake's Crossing. Uh, Amy, you are a resident. Is it true what they say? Are you overrun by mice? Uh, it's definitely true. Thankfully, uh, we're not. We're a bit uh, further away from the developments that's happening. Mm. But, yeah, one of my friends is literally catch- catching two to three mice a day like a day and she she is a clean freak as well like she does everything to try and get rid of them you know people say to do certain things and so you know um but yeah they're literally catching yeah. so many and to the point yesterday she caught a mouse literally chewing through her lounge oh come on dirty little yeah. buggers do you know what's causing the increase in mice in blake's crossing um so we've lived there for a few years about five years so when the um development kind of just Started, but they are doing yep. more development on like the outer skirts of the suburbs. So I'm not sure if that's it, but um, thankfully we own our house. So I guess if there was a mice problem, we would just deal with it ourselves. But my friend, she's in a rental and the landlord's like, nah, sorry, there's no real problem. Um, oh. But they're obviously not the one that's having two to three mice. Like, And she's got kids. So <laughs> you can imagine yeah, how terrifying these yeah. poor kids are of these mouse in the wardrobes and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, bad. it makes it makes it makes total sense though in terms of like if the development is further developing that that would then cause the mice to go somewhere else into the homes. Mum and Dad live in Lower Light, and whenever they, uh, whenever they uh, like mow down the crops, the mice that are living in the paddocks all come into their house because they got to yeah, go somewhere. This is why I'm a city guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. joins us now, uh, also from Blake's Crossing. Um, you've got a bit of a mice problem as well, obviously. Yeah. Hi, boys. Um, we don't in our house because we have two cats. We bring them as gifts rather than having them swarm the house. But our neighbours are absolutely swarmed and they're um, finding about two to three mice as well per day. Um, wow, so you... Them going for walks because they're along the footpath dead or alive. So. Uh, it does genuinely sound like there's a real mice problem in Blake's Crossing. So your solution in your house is to get cats, is that right? Oh, Absolutely. Nice. It's one of those problems, though, where if we encourage everyone to go and get cats to kill the mice, then there's going to be, like in Marion, there's that cat problem. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they get a uh, taste of blood, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and then we, then we can get, everyone gets dogs. Yep. Yep. Well, it's like much like the uh, the old woman who ate the fly. Yes. She didn't know why, and then I believe she ends up eating a cow and dying at some point. Yeah. I mean, never finished the book. What would you get to exterminate a dog, though? Like, if the dog's over around the city. <laughs> then I, then I, <laughs> I was setting you up there. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, didn't then take then the I bait. Have to say gun or something, and then people go, <laughs> oh, I don't like that show anymore, because they talk about shooting dogs. Uh, you know I, almost, I, mean? I almost got you. Yeah. Here's another bit of curry. What's trending? Trending all over the internet. Twitter. Instagram. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> Hey guys, well, when I say the name Kylie, who do you guys think of? Mm, no. Funny you say that. See, when I hear the name Kylie, I think of Kylie Jenner. Now, that just might be showing my age, I don't know. But uh, Kylie Minogue has actually, if you didn't know this, been fighting Kylie Jenner over the name Kylie for a few years now. And she recently only just talked about it on, in an interview this week, saying that, yes, she has been um, trying to stop Kylie Jenner from trademarking the name Kylie. Come for on. Her I mean, company. there's only one Kylie. Yeah, Kylie Jenner. No, no, it's Kylie Minogue. <laughs> the, the original. I mean, what? See, what's I Kylie don't agree. Jenner? I don't agree. Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Give, 
Well, okay, no, we're not talking about give it. Like net worth, Kylie Jenner is worth one over one billion dollars. Kylie Minogue yeah, but is worth one hundred million. Family, what she was born into. Yeah, you know, and also you don't go off of net worth though. You got to go off of who was the original Kylie, and she is older, so therefore she was around first. Yeah, but who's Dennis hotter right now? Kylie locomotion. Jenner. Locomotion. Where's her spinning around? That's what I want to know. Yeah, we're talking like, what was that, 20 years ago? Nah. I think, look, I'm on Kylie Jenner's side. I think she has every right to have the brand name Kylie. But um, in an absolute blow to her, though, Kylie Minogue has now started a website called Kylie with her own beauty line. So let's see how that one works out. Wow. Cop that. And get ready for the sequel of The Joker. Very excited. I saw this story this morning. I'm like, yeah, too good to be true, right? Uh-huh. I mean, that Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Uh, obviously, it was sort of. Ma- it definitely felt like it was a standalone film, yeah. which I probably would have been okay with because yep. I thought it was just great as it was. Yep. But I don't know. Money, money talks, and maybe mm. that's what's bringing back the second film. I wonder if now because there's a second because if the first one, if you haven't seen it, go go see it. Incredible, incredible movie. But there's no like. Villain in it. It's kind of like I suppose he's, well, he's not the he villain. Hero. There's no there's yeah no Batman. But I wonder if there's a sequel. Someone's going to have to add it to it. Mm. So yeah. that's going to be very interesting and to then, see. And then because I I know this is different to the Robert Pattinson world. Yep. So are we going to be living in a time where there's two different Batmans at the same time? Welcome to the multiverse. <laughs> Marvel's done it. Now DC is going to do it. I hate, I hate anything with the word multiverse in it. To be honest. <laughs> and finally. Oh, my goodness. There is a fresh demand for Scottish sex robots. Now, these, um, yes, you heard me correctly. So we've got sex robots. Obviously, you know, AI is taking off and robots are being uh, being able to do everything these days. But specifically, Scottish ones are now in high demand. (laughs) Wow, baby. Ten minutes without you seems like an eternity. Um, they a video of, of them making them overseas has uh, surfaced online, and people are absolutely going wild for them. Turns out, yes, the ones that have the Scottish accent are the hottest property. I mean, I've heard people like you know the French accent. You know, there's different accents yeah. from around the world. That I, I, I didn't know like the Scottish sex robot. Would oh, it's be pretty in good. It's a good I, I do not find that accent sexy oh, whatsoever. Hi, oh, baby. I've missed you. Treat me like yesterday's haggis, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ben and Liam. It's like dopamine for your ears. And Liam, we're in the golden age of streaming. We're spoilt for choice these days. Uh, particularly at the moment. So you've got season four of Stranger Things. That's dropped. Uh, you've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, episode four. That just dropped yesterday. Yeah. We've got the final ten in MasterChef Fans vs. Favourites. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's as yep. big as the others. You've got uh, Billy the Kid on Stan. Yeah, that's up there. We're really spoiled for choice. But I asked you this morning, what did you watch last night? And it blew me away when you said none of those. Yeah, no, I, I didn't choose to watch any of those last night, so I've been a little behind the eight ball on some of the memes coming out about the show's relevant at the moment because uh, last night I was I was watching New Tricks. It's all right, it's okay. Does it really New Tricks? I have never seen it, nor have I ever heard of it existing. It's a great show. It really is. It's it's like a British cop show, um, just full of shenanigans. Um, so you got this like uh, superintendent Sandra, and her career is kind of slipping. So she hires these three geriatric um, police officers to right. help with her like unsolved cases. Right. So they're like, they're just you know they're old and they're grumpy, and but they still get the police work done. <laughs> and um, so yeah, after uh, twelve seasons, though, what? Um, uh, unfortunately, there won't be a thirteenth um, because Dennis Waterman, uh, who plays Jerry, uh, the grumpiest one in the show, he he died last night <laughs> um, from old age, uh, which is a little sad. So uh, he he was kind of my favourite in the show. Did your mum and dad? Watch it growing up? Uh, my grandparents, actually. Wow. Yeah, it so used to be on the ABC. If I wanted to watch New Tricks now, would it be on iView or how would I find yeah, that? Yeah, and uh, I had to download a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit of a tricky show to, to find. You I, must I think, be, hey, it's a thing called Britbox. You it? must be the only person in Australia pirating <laughs> New Tricks. Yeah, they have a pretty low download, <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, it's probably my, it's, it's sort of like a bit of a guilty pleasure. I think I, I've got a theory that everyone's got at least one like old person show that they they like to watch. I reckon you bang on there, Liam. It'd be hypocritical of me to make too much fun of you, though, because there is an old person show that I absolutely love called Bargain Hunt. Even 
from the theme, this is this dates it. This is like this is made for people sixty five and up. I genuinely love watching Bargain Hunt in the format that it provides. So essentially, there's two teams. Right. Have you seen it? Do you know how it works? I, don't know. <laughs> I assume they hunt for bargains. Yeah, so there's two teams. They go to like um, they go to like antique stores and they go to like yard sales and stuff. Yeah. And they get given a budget. So you have a hundred bucks. I have a hundred bucks. Okay. You go and spend it at these garage sales and stuff. You find you buy something that you think's a bargain, and then they sell it at auction. And whoever makes more of a profit wins the prize money. Okay, so obviously, you know, an antiques road show, it's yep. always fun to watch people get their, you know, heartbroken and yep. that sort of stuff. But sometimes it's like, you know, we're talking yeah. you know, tens of thousands. Like, yeah. well, how much profit are they making on Bargain Hunt? Like, About 20 bucks. Yeah, or right. pounds. It's yeah. like 20 bucks. Like they literally go, you want wow. 20 pounds? Jan's made a profit of 20 pounds, <laughs> winning this week's Bargain Hunt. All right, let's see if the theory really is true this morning. Do you watch an old person's show. Give us a buzz, 13 24 10, if you do. Courtney, what old person show are you into? Hey, Ben and Liam. I, I watch uh, Hogan's Heroes and MASH. Oh, man. Nothing takes me back like the MASH theme. Even though I never watched a single episode, it always came on after The Simpsons, and then I'd always yep. turn it off real quick. I wasn't allowed to watch <laughs> The Simpsons, but on the odd episode that I did catch, you know, when Mum was maybe out late, uh, yeah, when I saw that chopper rising above the hills, I knew it was time for me to go. Um, isn't like MASH, like, like MASH does, if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, like it's pretty it's pretty high up there, but I, well, what's good about it? Yeah. Like, what happens in it? Um, I just love all the war sort of uh, like uh, shows on television and everything. It just brings me back to school doing history. Bring, brings you back to school. <laughs> were, you, were you a child soldier? Were you? Oh, I, I love all those war shows. Brings me back uh, to school. Thank you very much, Courtney. Uh, Elise joins us now. What show do you like watching? Hey, Ben and Lane. Um, I love Frasier. <laughs> but I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled. If I had to choose between uh, Mash and Frasier, I'd be going Mash. I reckon. H- how old are you? <laughs> uh, I'm 29. Yeah, that's that's too young to be enjoying. Is Frasier. it? Though, I didn't realise until recently. I think I saw a video on like TikTok he's, or something. He's a radio host. Is, a, is he a radio host? Yes. Yeah. So that's. I mean, like maybe that would be up our alley. And doesn't he have like a really wide sort of crazy producer? Yeah, Roz. Yeah, she's pretty funny. Yeah, Roz. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. like our producer yeah. Bell. Hundred percent. Maybe yeah. you would like Fraser. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, maybe I I'll check Fraser out. It. Okay. Well, maybe you've twisted our arm. Okay, well, we're going to move to Chris. You watch an old person's show, mate? Morning, boys. How are we? Good, mate. Uh, Blue Healers. I'm not sure if you heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> you, how old are you? Oh, I'm 31, mate. So I've uh, yeah, that... for the originals on the TV. <laughs> How many seasons of Blue Healers are there? Well, there's 14 seasons. And, uh, wow. Prime, playing them, playing them back-to-back. Oh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime's got it. I don't know, that, that, must have been, <laughs> that must have been the cheapest deal that Amazon Prime ever made. <laughs> How much for Blue Healers? Yeah, we'll give you 800 bucks. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and that is the end of the Ben and Liam podcast. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Broadcasting from quite literally a broom cupboard. Yep, in New South Wales this morning. <laughs> Whoa, that's a that's dust. a podcast sneeze. Well, it's just dust in here. Like, yeah, it is pretty just, dusty. It's, yeah. it's cramped. Yeah. It's it's dusty. Yep. But you know, it goes to show that even when you when you strip it right back and you take away the radio studio, mm. you know, at the end of the day, it's just a couple of mates knocking it about. Yep, and that is the you know that's the essence of the Ben and Liam show. Hey, you know what we haven't done for a little while? We haven't done a extra pod like the off air pod pod. Mm. Um, so let's do one today's Thursday. So let's do one tomorrow. Team member of the week, of course. I'm yep. going for is it six in a row or five? Yeah, it'll be literally six. Wow, yeah, yeah. never been done before. Let's talk about six, baby. Let's talk about I'll six. See. Yeah. Um, uh, but also that that'll be exciting. I've also got a bombshell to drop. A bombshell yeah. in the off-air podcast. So there'll be there'll be team member of the week, and there'll yeah. be a bombshell. Oh man, I can't wait. Yeah. Also, um, we can uh, we can stir Bell up about oh, this yeah, week. She, she had a day off. She had a day off. Yes, yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but yep. you know that'll be covered off as well. That'll be covered off. You hear all that? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Ben and Liam is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.